I feel like the point of him repeating that is there's there's something special about the image of God. I think um, the image and the likeness, that language, um, it's listed a few times in Scripture. Shocking happening. So, <laughs> I just do rapid fire. <laughs> so, but shock that fly. Uh, for sure. So, give me a flash card and I'll whack it when it lands on Jason. If the fly lands on me, I'll shock both of you. Go, <laughs> <laughs> um, Keep Brian safe. Yes, so, uh, but, but there's something special in the language of the likeness and the image. Do am I am I going too far in in saying um, that it's talking about roles? I don't think so because I think the information following that means we're going to be just like God rules the heavens. We as mankind are going to rule uh, over His creation his, and have dominion here, uh, just like God has dominion in heaven. So I think well, those, just like He's the Creator, we have creative abilities. Well, sure, maybe. Um, I think it's I think it's specifically talking about His dominion because it just says. The next sentence is, you're going to have dominion over all these things. So, uh, verse 17 really kind of explains how this compound unity of this one thing is divided into maybe even uh, uh, the concept of personhood or roles or whatever that is. So, he says, so God created man. What's the word that he uses for man? 27? Yes, I'm sorry, 27. Because I went to 17 and that was the heaven. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Said 20, 27. 27. I'm with you. So God created man in his own image. When he says he created man in his own image, what is he talking about? He's talking about mankind, right? If, if he's not talking about mankind, what he's talking about is he created Adam and he created Adam as a... He's or, talking about mankind. Yeah, oh yeah, he's a... Well, we won't shock you for that. Yeah, he's creating uh, Adam male and female, which is weird. Um, so he said, but our current society would say that. Yeah, yeah. that's another whole other topic. But the overarching that's a red herring. Yeah, that's a red somebody should get shocked. A little bit. <laughs> that, no, I brought it up so it's not, it's not your red herring. But uh, the overarching thing is mankind. So that's what we are. We are mankind, and mankind can be divided into two main groups. In fact, the only two groups there are. Um, the male the, and female. Male and female. Those two groups. Those two groups. That's it. Um, so when he's talking about this, he's he's saying there's a compound unity in mankind, and I feel like the the interesting part is there's certain. And when I look at this, there's when I talk about the image and the likeness, there's certain roles that come with being the father, or being the male, and there's come certain roles that come with being the female, and I find that those roles are actually comparable to the similar roles that we see in the Godhead. First of all, a wife is supposed to be, let's just like to start with the wives, a uh, wife should be submissive, right, to her husband, right? God submits, Jesus, God, Jesus, God, submits to God the Father. Um, it's also the, the, the husband's job to lead and guide, right? It's, it's his will that's supposed to be enacted. Uh, the same thing is true for... Um, for, for Christ. He says, I didn't come to do my will, but whose will? The Father's, right? Also, creation. The, 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 right? the Bible says that Jesus created all things. All things were created through him, for him. Help me out. And by him. And by him. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was it. Uh, but it, he's the one who brings creation. And in the role of a woman, she is the one who brings life. And so I see in, in his... So, so basically, you're discussing an illustration. Correct. Biblical illustration that you, that you feel is how God's trying to reveal his nature through uh, man and woman, marriage, and their roles. Yes. The broad part is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, I haven't got so I was gonna, Yeah, I, 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 I struggle with that one, but again, I think as he's... He's Hagar the main serpent. Yeah, <laughs> as, he, as we begin to understand who God is, I don't think he pours out the entirety, right? Um, you're not going to get the, the full scope of a story, right? We don't quite understand or see all the, the amazing things that, that Jesus has accomplished on the cross 
in the sacrifice. It's a picture, it's an image, it's imperfect, but we begin to get the idea when, especially when, uh, you know, John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God, right? So th these are just pictures to help us get a good idea of what those roles, what that image looks like. And what, to me, what that image doesn't look like is it doesn't look like a split personality. It doesn't look like three separate, but one, not three personalities. I, I, I believe that in the same well, way... Why? Why not three... Why not, why not three persons? Um, if, if my definition of person is not separate, one being, I'm not talking about three people. I'm talking about three persons because God chooses to use anthropomorphic language to, to describe Him, the Son, the Spirit, gives them emotion, they have knowledge, Mm -hmm. They have attributes of a person. That's why we use the word person. Uh, a role doesn't have an attribute. Now, I, I agree. I think husband, wife, the roles, marriage, obviously from Genesis, right? Uh, all of that is, is used. I think that's why Satan attacks marriage because all of those are examples of or symbols of pictures of the relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I, I think all of that carries over. But the reason when we describe God, we use the word person is so that when Scripture talks about the, those uh, emotions, the emotive um, or feelings or whatever, you, it, God chooses to use that language for a reason because we as persons understand what He means. That we understand... And he uses those things to describe himself, right, or Jesus, or or the Holy Spirit, so that what I the error I guess I want to be careful of is that we don't go into like the force, like there's just a force of the Father and a force of the Son, and a, you get what I'm saying? A but that force <clears throat> where if I could interject to help maybe with the flow, and this may not help. I apologize if it doesn't. But I think we're talking about the difference between persons and personifications, where you have person-like qualities without actually having an actual separate personality. So the problem, I agree, is that, is that what you're saying? I, I, I think the problem that we get to, though, is you can't have a, a, a will without a person. You can't have a, right? You can't, I, that's why we use that word for mm -hmm. the definition. Right. And I, and I think, um, I, I think that is... It's just a hard way for me to describe it or understand it because when I go and talk to somebody, I, the natural tendency for me was to think of three individuals. You know what I mean? Three three persons. Sure. I'm a person, you're a person, you're a person. And, and it's interesting and, and there's three which, persons. Which happens. <laughs> hey, weird. Which is why, admittedly, that's why there is you know, 2,000 years of discussion on this. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, when we look at the church history, uh, the first couple of statements we have from early church fathers, Polycarp, uh, but it's not very long in church history before the development of the definition, not necessarily to pigeonhole our thinking, but to set up boundaries. Sure. If we get outside of this boundary, we're now coloring... Uh, a, a picture of God that is outside of what he, how he is describing himself. Now, I don't, I, I'm not trying to say it's not, it's, there's not a struggle. I think that's good because we're trying to describe the incomprehensible God. Sure. But I think what you're doing there is instead of using the Bible, you're using Polycarp. Yeah, I would say, uh, would, would we say that by referring to early church fathers, that we should let that strongly influence our beliefs on Scripture. No, but I think it supports that this is not a off the fourth idea. century idea. Sure, fifth century sure. idea. I don't. I'm not trying to say we do know things got weird after the fourth century. I'm not trying to say that Polycarp is right, and therefore we follow Polycarp. I'm just saying the early church fathers, when they looked at Scripture, as when we look at Scripture today. This was a discussion for them, and that the, the that historical has. point is saying, here's how we try to stay within, orthodoxy is a fancy word of saying, 
trying to stay within the, the boundaries of Scripture. I'm trying not to go outside of what Scripture says and recognizing that within Scripture there's mystery. I'm not saying there's not. Yeah. That and God, for our viewers, that the reason the I brought that up was because we want to make sure we're not doing what's called an appeal to authority fallacy, where because someone else who we maybe respect or appreciate believes or likes something that we should also. Look, yeah. I, I just want you to know that James White agrees with me, and therefore... <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm saying. Therefore, I saying, am right, and you saying, are pretty crazy. Because James White says this, and Todd White says that, this is what I believe. In yeah. fact, just so we can get down to it, you're more like Todd White anyway. Oh, <laughs> well, personal attack. Personal attack. And while we're on the subject, just so we don't let this delve too deeply into craziness... If you believe that, you don't care about the starving children. Oh, appeal, that's called an appeal to pity. You don't, you don't care about starving children in Africa. A bad view of the community leads to children starving in Africa. Well, I, I, think, I think we can both agree that it is super important to have a right idea about the Trinity. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And if a bad idea or a, 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 a bad view of the Trinity leads to, you know, uh, Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness or there's, there's, there's all kinds of things. That which, get, which usually goes to, right, the denial of the deity of Christ. Right. That's where ultimately that's where they want to, that's what they're trying to get out of. And so, that, by the way, is not a slippery slope, although it could be sounding like one to an opponent because they would say, well, you're assuming that by this, this, and this, that it's going to lead to this. But we do know, whenever you start getting away from Scripture and your views come outside of Scripture, you're going to depart, be departing from the one true God in some way, shape, or form. And so I think what, what Scripture, in my opinion, is clearly saying is that the image and the likeness Why of God... Why you use that word? The image and likeness of God... What Scripture is clearly saying... Clearly. Is you're an idiot. <laughs> no, I did not say that. Well, I think clear because, Scripture... Because I clearly don't understand what Scripture is clearly saying. I think the clearly part is the part that we want to not focus on. How can we be flirting with an appeal to ignorance, trying to use something that is unknown to prove your point? We don't know for sure with all certainty that Scripture is, is telling us this, but you believe that it's, cl it's clear to you. Okay, it's clear to me okay. that... Uh, I think you should be shocked with this. <laughs> I'm only submitting to the elder here. That's uh, just so you know. Well, uh, if that is true, I think a couple of words that. So, but I, I think Scripture is clearly explaining to the image and the it likeness. Makes it clear to me again. Oh, God. It's okay. It's all right. Okay. Just, just I rephrase, took one for that. Rephrase it. I, in my opinion, <laughs> it's clear to me. It's clear to me. It's clear to me through this section of Scripture that God is is helping us. He, he's helping us define the roles of a man and woman, and in light of that, he's helping us understand his role, yeah. God the Father, I don't, with, with I don't the disagree with any of that. With so, the son. so I think all of that is is correct, and probably, you know, what we want to illustrate today, uh, I don't want to cut you off either, but... You're cutting if me off. We, am I cutting you off? It's okay. <laughs> is that but a logical fallacy? I'm, just, I'm yeah. thinking that... Let's bring it around. I don't know how long we've gone, but we'll probably get a couple videos out of it. But the idea, two of the things that I want to get across, we're having fun with this. Um, I'm not it's having any fun. <laughs> I, I'm having a blast. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, when he was pushing the button, you were laughing when I was pushing Oh, outside. man. So, I, again, I do think this is a, a great illustration of how we can have a discussion over a, a topic that can become emotionally driven, right? Absolutely. But um, but because I love you and you love me and we're able to to have we've actually had this conversation many times without shot callers and uh, and never had hit each other with a pipe or close the company. But things are always better when you add bacon. So yeah. So when you add bacon, it always gets better. Um, so when we so I guess, I guess I just want to illustrate that and and I think we can um, probably carry on the discussion uh, another time without shock callers, but just try to, to sure. indicate, hey, here, pe real people everywhere struggle with the de definition, and I want us to understand the reason there's a definition is to try to keep us inside the lines, coloring inside mm -hmm. Scripture. And then we can differ on 
interpretation of scripture or or how that interpretation should be applied without putting one another down or sure. doing those kind of things. So so hopefully we're illustrating that to, to you guys at home. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it as much as Jason did. And, uh, and uh, we'll have some other discussions of this coming up so that we can continue to develop the ideas uh, that we started here uh, prayerfully without shot callers. But if I can't keep Jason under control, we might have to bring him back. So uh, God bless you guys. I hope you have a, a, a good week for Jackie. Jason Richardson, who's a pastor at Calvary Chapel, Kimberly in Idaho. Check him out. And Brian Bacon, who's a pastor of the church in Twin Falls. Uh, you can also check him out. I think all of us have stuff online for you guys to see and teachings that we talk about. Um, give them all uh, a, a whirl on, uh, on YouTube. God bless you guys, and go in peace.